Amen. I'll wait for the rest of you to get there. Amen. And it reads, Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They violated the king's command and risked their lives rather than serve or worship any God except their own. Therefore, I issue a decree that any of any anyone of any people, nation, or language who says any offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be torn them from them, and his house made a garbage dump, for there is no other God who is able to deliver like this. Then the king rewarded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. I want you to go back in your Bibles to uh, verse 28, and let's read it again. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They violated the king's command and risked their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Uh, here we have four Jewish boys by the name of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah from God's house in the land of Judah who delivered into the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon by God. Now in Babylon, they were renamed Belshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo, and they were to be taught the ways of the wise men in Babylon. So basically, their everyday lives were to be changed into one of a Babylonian. Now they had accepted the changes until it came to their diet. They were to feast like the king, eating his food and drinking his wine, but they uh, chose to stick to their same consecrated meal. So when they requested this, uh, the guard replied to them and said, my life is depending in, upon your well-being. So if your health depletes and you look worse than the other boys, then my life will surely be taken and I will be replaced. So they pleaded with the guard and he tested them uh, for 10 days. And after the 10 days, they looked better than the other boys. So it seemed as if their lives were making a turnaround in this captain's position, right? Uh, let me just continue on. Uh, so our... Uh, so King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream that he didn't understand. So uh, the Lord has given him this dream now, and it's puzzling the king. So the king seeks counsel from uh, the most wise of the wise men, and none of them can interpret this dream. So he orders for all the wise men to be killed. Uh, so let me just break for a moment. Isn't that something that these boys were to be killed uh, for something that they didn't do, something that they didn't have control over, and something that they didn't even know about. So when the guard gets to them, uh, he tells them uh, what the reason is that they're going to be killed. And Daniel says, uh, the, uh, Daniel says, I can interpret this dream and go tell the king that I can interpret this dream. So in the midst of this, uh, Daniel tells the others to start praying and seeking God's counsel. And the Lord reveals the interpretation of Daniel in a dream. And Daniel tells the king, and Daniel is promoted uh, along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So here we are again at another turning point for these boys, uh, so it would seem. Now here we have the same Jewish boys taken in captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar, sentenced to death now in high positions, almost spiritual advisors to the king. So the king takes an object which was in his dream and made it an actual statue and orders for everyone in the land of Babylon to bow down and worship it. Now the Jewish boys are true to God and refuse to bow down, so the king sentences them to death. The same king that told them to eat his food and drink his wine, the same king who had just relied on them to 
interpret his dream. Uh, the same king who had just promoted him, promoted all of them in his kingdom. But he doesn't stop at a regular death, but a death in the hottest fire that he could get to the point where anyone close to the furnace for too long died. So here the boys are in another what seems to be death moment. Now I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, how bad do you want it? Amen. So what we have here is a group of boys who are willing to throw everything away. They uh, have done everything that they could possibly think of doing and gotten rid of everything that the Lord has told them to get rid of. So now these boys that were taken from their lifestyle and they taken from God's house in the land of Judah and they gave up their clothes and their shoes and their daily routines and their families and loved ones. So here these same boys are about to die in this fiery furnace. But I want to just take a minute and think about what is it that is keeping these boys going. So here these boys are. Uh, being put under extreme amounts of pressure. Now, if some of us were under these same amounts of pressure, we'd be all hard boiled and crap. So why or what, rather, is it that is keeping these boys consistently chasing after a God that has put them in these positions in the first place? Uh, the, uh, he's put them under the authority of their enemy, and they make a life for themselves, right? No. So uh, then he gives the king a dream uh, which could cause their death because someone else didn't know their God. So what is driving these boys to the point where they're, they're willing to disobey those who have ruled over them and are put to death but keeps them praying, keeps them praying time and time again? Well, people of the Lord, I have come with an answer. I bet you while they were down there in the fiery furnace, they were thinking to themselves, greater is he that is in me. I heard David say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. And my God, I heard somebody else say, that God is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I heard somebody else say, he's Jehovah Nisi. Oh, he's God. God has given me the victory. Somebody said he's Jehovah Shireh. I heard somebody say, oh, my living in the valley, oh, my rose of Sharon, my bright and morning star, he is my everything, and Jesus is his name. Now, because he's been all this and more, people of God, and I'm going to take my seat after this. Oh my. What I shall do in the meantime that God has been my provider and been so awesome to me. 